We are preparing for a Hanukkah party with our family at our cousin's house, and it falls to us as a tradition to make the latkes. So before we begin, we're going to actually be prepping the latkes at home, at least part of it, and then when we get to our cousin's house, we'll be frying them all up. We'll finish the mixture and fry them all up. First thing that we do is we're going to uh, sharpen our chef's knife here. This is the Spyderco Sharp Maker, a triangle sharp maker, and it's got two angles here. One is for the edge and one is for a back bevel. We'll just do the 40 degree edge. And this knife has gotten a little bit dull, so we'll clean it up. These use ceramic rods, and you basically just go straight down on it a couple of times. This gives it the right angle. And then I'll switch over to these light ceramic rods. I'll give it a couple of swipes on each side. And finally, I'm going to hone this with a sapphire hone a couple of times and now let's see if it will slice through a piece of paper okay when I was growing up before we'd make latkes the uh, particularly the women in the house would spend all their time peeling the potatoes and getting them ready for the latkes uh, we had an epiphany a couple of years ago saying we don't need to peel the potatoes Potato skins are delicious. So let's keep the potato skins. So we're just going to uh, cut the potatoes into chunks that will be uh, small enough to fit into the uh, chute on the food processor. So I'm just going to cut up a bunch of potatoes. In our case, we are actually cutting up, oh, about, uh, about seven pounds of potatoes for this uh, little gathering. Don't have to be uh, very neat about it. It just has to be able to fit into the chute. So we'll continue cutting up some potatoes here, and we'll be back in a moment. I'm just taking the potatoes and putting them into a big bowl here. And there will be a steady stream of potatoes coming. And so uh, getting the onions ready is similar to the potatoes and we've got most of them ready we'll just do one more here make sure this is all peeled off and get rid of the garbage so now we've got Onions, potatoes, and more potatoes. Generally, I like about a third as many onions as we have potatoes, like a rather oniony mix. So let's talk about what we're doing with the food processor. The, we're going to use the food processor to both grate most of the, um, of the potatoes and then chop some of them. Uh, this uh, grater broke off and I had to fix it, but we're going to use the grating blade first and then later on, we're going to take about a third of it and use the chopping blade. So we get a mixture of sort of a mush and stringy potatoes. So we're going to start with the grating blade first. And one of the things to remember, we use this to push down into the, uh, into the uh, chute. One thing to remember when you start loading this thing is to remove the chute because if you try to stick it in here, while your, uh, while your uh, plunger is in here, it looks like it'll work, but you're just going into the bottom of the chute. So we're going to grate a whole bunch of these potatoes in the food processor, and then we're going to dump them into a colander that's sitting in a large pot, because we want the water to drain. And we used to do this at location when we'd go to our cousin's house, but we found it much easier to 
prepare the uh, the potatoes and the onions first. Let them drain while we're driving the 45 minutes to our cousin's house. Then we can mix it with the rest of the ingredients when we're there and, uh, and proceed. So I'm just going to start shredding the uh, potatoes. We'll do one or two runs of these. You don't want to let the bowl fill up too much because that'll just jam up on you. Now we're just using the pulse mechanism here to hold it down while I'm feeding. And we'll open it up in a minute just to see what we've got so far. Remembering my grandmother using the uh, knuckle buster uh, box grater, uh, this, this is progress. So let's take a look at what we have. A little bit on top. And so these look like, like shoestring potatoes. They're actually pretty, uh, uh, pretty nice. And all I'm going to do is take these and dump them into the colander and go back and do some more. You can see we're using pretty much every part of the potato. And we'll just do a couple more and then we'll turn off the camera and revisit you after we've got seven pounds of potatoes done. Well, while you were away, I made a couple of changes. I removed the colander just because this was overflowing the colander too much. And I'm now uh, using, leaving the food processor on rather than pulsing. I'll be using the pulse mechanism for the chopping. This sure does beat the box grater. And now we do the same thing with the onions. Which will make us cry. I may decide that we want a few more onions. But we'll see. a whole lot more onions, probably twice as much as I've got. But you can see there's a lot of onion juice here. So that's one of the things that's going to come through in the strainer. So out comes another bag of onions. The onions really do add a lot of flavor to the dish. And so let's see how many onions we're going to put through here. Maybe another five onions. Well, I've spent the last couple of minutes preparing another batch of onions. And the first batch, you might be able to see, has a lot of onion juice on the bottom here. Um, and this is one of the reasons I took the potatoes out of the strainer, is I'm going to use a strainer for this. Um, the onions give off a lot of liquid. So let's continue with the grating. And these are pretty strong onions. And my eyes were tearing pretty well while I was cutting them up. Not too bad now. So 
So the onions don't uh, don't get stringy like the uh, potatoes. So I'm not going to have to put the onions through the uh, through the chopping process. In fact, little chunks of onion, kind of nice. And here's the rest of the onions. There's almost no such thing as too much too many onions in a in a latke. It really gives them a tremendous amount of flavor. While I'm working on the potatoes, I'm going to take all these grated onions and again see all of the onion juice pouring out. I'm going to pour them into a colander, squish them down a little bit, and already there's a whole lot of juice at the bottom. Uh, but we're going to let this just drain because if the latke mix is too wet, uh, it doesn't help you along. You just want the moisture from the potatoes basically. So now the plan is to take about a third of the potatoes and chop them using this wood, word pro <laughs> not word processor, using this food processor chopping blade. So I'm just going to be reaching into our bucket of potatoes here, take the shoestrings, not too many at a time. And I'm just going to pulse them a little bit because we want to turn them into a Kind of a mush, but not, not very mushy. Let's take a look at that. And maybe just a little bit further. And so, this now looks like this. So we don't no longer have the big shoestringy uh, type, we've got this short, mushy consistency. Maybe the next batch I'll let go just a little bit longer. So this actually acts kind of like the glue for the potatoes, yet there's still plenty of the stringy stuff to, uh, to give it texture. So it's nice when the stringy stuff is on the outside and it, uh, it crisps beautifully. So it's all potato, and just a little bit more. We don't want it to turn into a paste, but we just want it to be uh, something that's going to give up its liquid a little easier. And yes, I use my hands for this stuff. Got lots of spatulas. And I need like one or two more of these uh, of these uh, bowls full, which will pretty much give me about a third to a half of the uh, of the potatoes. It's processing Very nicely. And this too, now that they've been kind of mashed up, this too is going to uh, uh, not need draining because it's very, very wet. Um, in, the, uh, in the larger uh, bowl here, uh, the larger pot, uh, there's some liquid uh, oozing out, but not that much. So the, uh, the colanders are a good idea. So now you can see that we've got this uh, bowl here of mush. We've got this nice stringy pieces that can go mixed in. And we've got the onions, which are giving off a lot of juice. What I can do is transfer this to a bowl. We'll drain that a little bit more later, but I want to drain the uh, potatoes. So now I'm going to drain the potatoes too. So now you can see I've got about the same amount of mashed up potatoes as I've got uh, onions. So I'm just pressing down on the bowl here to sort of squeeze out some of the water like that. 
Then I can put the onions back into the top and continue pressing down. And you can probably see the liquid oozing out from the colander. And this will continue to ooze out for the next hour or so. And that's pretty much as far as we're going to go with the prep before we leave to go to our cousin's house. We'll finish the prep at our cousin's house and what we'll be doing is we'll be adding the uh, softer mixture to the shoe strings. We'll be adding some eggs, some matzo meal, salt and pepper. We're going to set up a couple of frying pans with uh, vegetable oil and sauteing some onion quarters in the oil to flavor the oil because once again you can't have too many onions and fried onions are delicious. So we will uh, pack everything up and uh, head over to our cousin's house. See you later. Okay, here we are at cousin's house. So we've got the uh, pot full of potatoes. We've got pans. We've got uh, drained onions and potatoes over here. And what else do we have? We've got kosher salt, black pepper, oil, matzo meal, eggs, more onions, and implements of destruction. So now we're going to start mixing up all the ingredients and we'll see how it goes from there. Now I'm recording. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to start prepping everything and mix all this mess together. So we need probably five to seven eggs for this amount of uh, for this amount of potatoes and onions. This is thrilling watching people uh, crack eggs. I'm excited. Uh, let's split the difference. Let's do six eggs and then we'll see if we need any more. That's good. And then we need something to mix it up. Probably should be using a fork. And this is going to get mixed into the potato and onion mixture with my hands. Okay, that's close enough. And now we have all these potatoes. Going to drain off the liquid and then uh, be right back. So now I'm pouring in the egg. Pouring in the onion and the, the grated and chopped potato. And now for the fun stuff. Now to mix it all together. Now to get messy. This is like so good. There's no neat way of doing this. I'm just trying to make a pretty uniform mixture. So all together, this probably weighs about 10 pounds. A little under 10 pounds. So now this is awfully wet. And awfully noisy in here too. So now we're going to uh, dry it out a little bit by adding the matzo meal. Okay, so we're going to start with some matzo meal. The question is how much matzo meal to put in. I don't know. Uh, we'll just try a bunch of matzo meal. The matzo meal just helps to bind it. As you can see, there really is no recipe for this, like baking. Uh, how much of this do you use? How much of that do you use? Um, but it always turns out pretty well. Uh, this is going to need substantially more. We've got two boxes of matzo meal here. 
My guess is we'll use most of one box. The binder. Then, really, the only thing left is to add salt and pepper. I tend to like to put in a fair amount of pepper. It's starting to bind up a little bit now. It's nice. That holds together reasonably well. I think I just want to put in a little more matzo meal. So much for easy pour spout. Well, this is really all about potatoes and onions. The, uh, the egg and the matzo meal just help bind it all together. But now it's, it's actually kind of nice. And you can see how it's nice and stringy from the, from the grated potatoes and there's enough of the, uh, of the chopped potatoes, like the paste, to sort of glue it all together. And now, I'm going to add some salt. I'm not going to add that much salt to the to the mix here. Um, I'm not going to add that much salt. I mean, it's a fair amount of potatoes here, so I'm going to add you know, a decent amount of salt. But really, we can salt them afterwards when we're uh, uh, when it's all completed. You sprinkle salt on the finished potatoes, but we will add pepper to this. Mm -hmm. And now normally we would use fresh ground black pepper, but we're uh, we're not normal. We're not today. So let's just put in a, a good shot of pepper and back to the mixing. And we take out the <laughs> the price tag. <laughs> wow, that's flavor. Yeah, that, that little bit of extra red flavor, right? <laughs> this feels so icky. Is that a technical term? <laughs> yes. And I'm getting pepper up in my nose. Not to be confused with the onions in my eyes from before. But I think we are ready to fry. Let's just let that sit for a little while. I'll clean off my hands and get the oil ready. Okay. What we're doing is just scooping out some of this into the smaller bowl, just make it a little easier to work with. A noisy relatives in the background. So we can work from here. And the uh, old saying is hot, oil, hot pan, cold oil, food won't stick. So we're starting with a hot pan. <laughs> Adding the oil, about a quarter of an inch of oil to each of these pans. And there's no telling yet, you know, how much oil we need to put in or how hot the oil is going to be. So the first couple of latkes are always sort of sacrificed until the pan just gets hot enough and we determine what this stove needs to be at. Um, this isn't my stove, so it just takes a little while. So we just wait a little while for the oil to heat up. And now we're going to uh, put in onions into each one to help flavor the oil. It also gives me an idea of how hot the oil is. Oh, oh, stop. Why? Well, that's your question. Wait for the flare. Oh, okay. So this gives us a little bit of flavor to the oil and gives us some fried onions. Mm. Okay, so now I need this. Well, we're going to do a couple of tests here. And then we'll get to the next one. I don't have your princess yet. Almost. Why? Oh, 
going to take about a tablespoon of the mixture, drop it in here, and flatten it down a little bit in each one of the pans, and see what we come up with. Bubbling nicely. And mostly we're going to be using the spoons to man maneuver them around, but until we get an idea of how hot the pan needs to be, we're just going to fuss with it a little bit. Leave it alone for a couple moments. Take out these onions. Here's the thing. He's been eating things since he was lots of things. You know, the decorative rocks. Nice. Fried onions. It's a beautiful thing. Earbuds, pen caps. I just cardboard, paper, and you'll notice that the uh, vodkas are not sticking to the bottom of the pan. They kind of float around very nicely. I hope. This one looks like it needs to be a little hotter. I turned it down a little while ago, so it'll come back up. This one's hotter than this one. No, I never. I, I saw, he got really sick once. Remember, because I swallowed you. And when we actually start putting in four or five latkes in the pan, it tends to cool off the pan a little bit. So we need to let it heat up between each cooking. And we'll see as we turn these over if they hold together or if they need a little more binder. You can start seeing them getting nice and crispy on the edges here. Come in here. Yeah, they're starting to get brown. Let's, let's try turning one over and see what it looks like. That's pretty good. You can see how it's nice and brown there. This one isn't quite ready yet, so this pan, being a bigger pan with a little more oil, takes a little while to heat up. And uh, cooking a lot because it's easy. Cleaning up after the splattered oil, that's kind of hard. You can see that the uh, this cook pan is cooler because the onions haven't cooked quite as fast as the other pan. But the onions look lovely. I make them take every single one out so that I can turn that. Alright, let's try turning this one over. I can still tell it needs to go a little hotter. But I think we're in good shape. They gave me either a glove or a piece of wax paper, and I can smell it every fish. So I kind of like my latkes a little bit on the uh, well done side. Other people like them lighter and fluffier, but I like the crispy stuff going on in the edge. And so I'll wind up making some that are a little less crispy, some that are very well done, and uh, people tend to pick whatever they like. So this one here, it's going to take out. I'll just come over here, and that looks lovely. Um, and then typically we would sprinkle with some salt, and we'll do that. Uh, after the test pieces and sometimes just kind of blot off some of the oil and so you can see here that we've got the nice crispy parts and we've got the sort of tender inside and that's what I'm looking for so I'm just going to make these a little bit hotter this one a little hotter and this one here you can see this one here has more of the of the sort of gray brown area so it's not quite as crisp it's more more tender but uh, as a first test it's not too bad you want to get the oil hot enough so that the um, the moisture in the potatoes causes steam which keeps the oil from seeping into the potato kind of like making a good french fry uh, you want to make it hot enough so that the oil just isn't um, uh, isn't pouring into the potato. You want the pressure from the moisture in the potato to be pushing the oil out. How, how big was the slate? 
Okay, so we have all those 20 pounds. All right, let's try a few. And then we'll get our uh, volunteer fry cooks to work. Yeah, I'm just going to... Uh, uh, you don't want to overload the pan because then things will just steam instead of fry. And by the time we've done a couple of pounds of this, we'll kind of figure out how much we need. And some will make smaller and some will make bigger. There's no right or wrong way to do this. You can hear all the conversations of my very loud family in the background. So this is a pretty big lot here. And one more right here. And it still needs a little more. I can take this one here and move it to the hotter part of the pan. You can see these are going to be kind of crispy. That's what I'm talking about. You like, you like the crispy ones? Yeah. The crispier the better. Okay, so we're picking out a couple of latkes. That's a pretty, that's a, that's a toasty one. That one's got Fran's name on it. That one's kind of more mellow. So you can see we've got the really crispy ones, we've got the uh, more tender ones. Yeah. And now we take a little bit of salt. And take another one of these. So one of my sisters said, this isn't the way grandma used to make them. It's true, she, she would uh, grate more of it um, and make it a finer mash than rather than using more of the kind of stringy potatoes. But to be honest with you, I like the crunchy bits. I'm with you. And so these have a good mix of, of being tender, soft on the inside, and crispy on the edges. Okay. He has a nice size lock. And a little salt, kosher salt. And these can go into the other room. You oh, want to get a good close-up of this? Nice zoom in on the hand there. Oh, yes. Okay. So nice. Listen, and into the hungry masses. Okay, here's... Press down. Push it up. Push, 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 push. That's beautiful. It's about the right height. So if you, if you make yeah if you make a whole if you make a big mound it just you just press it down a little wide. supposed to do it, but she didn't want to be on YouTube. Yeah, I love it. Which after I did Gangnam Style on on cousin Michael's iPhone, I figured nothing could be more embarrassing than that. So you notice that my hand just got much more feminine as uh, as mm -hmm. I'm putting these into the pot here. Much prettier. Yes, yeah, so the, between the last shot and this one, I got a manicure. And no, my hand, my little windows still closed. Yeah, that's right. Oh, give it the Lord. I could. I saw house plans, but I'm really good with my outside. So, this one's like a machine. So, just give it. We will flip no latke before it's time. You can do it. You can do it. You can do it. You can do it. 
Okay. You okay? And if you turn it over and it looks a little underdone, you just let the other side go a little longer. Alright, I was telling you, 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 I was telling you,